What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Um, got a lot to discuss in the news. Um, we already did our, our Eternals show. Hope you guys liked that and enjoyed it, and hopefully you commented on your um, opinions about the movie. But we're going to talk about uh, some of the news uh, of the past week that we found very, very interesting. I apologize now if I get a little agitated. <laughs> but there's just some things you just sort of got to be like, come on, man, really? Uh, and that's sort of how I've taken some of this news. Um, but we're going to be talking about the possible live action what if uh, um, consideration that Marvel is having. I, I, and we're going to get into that. Um, a prediction I had a long time ago about Ava DuVernay not doing the new gods and Ava uh, seemingly hints at what the what was the cause of the cancellation of that film. I was sort of half right, and I'll get into that. Uh, Sony Marvel is at odds about a pet peeve of ours in regards to trailers. Um, so we'll get into that. Um and then our final two topics will deal with The Rock and his, um, I guess, he's championing something that nobody is asking for. And then his sort of comment with regards to the reception of the Black Adam scene, because it's not a trailer. Um we'll have our opinions regarding that but first up brian what do you think of this possible what if uh live action series on disney plus i personally don't think we need it i think i'm we're fine with the animation that we've gotten so far it's been hit or miss but more when they hit they've hit um, but what they when they haven't you know it's whatever, but um, I certainly want them to continue trying and, and, and pushing the envelope on the What If series. What were your thoughts on this possibility? So we're leading off the podcast with the pat ourselves on the back portion <laughs> of the news. <laughs> because if you recall, when we were talking about What If and what we were seeing, I asked this very question. I said, "Are is it possible that we are seeing some test drives in these episodes for things we could see actually up on screen. And now we get Kevin Feige at least opening the door to the possibility that's, you know, some form of a live action what if. I'm with you. I, I think a self-contained what if show that's also live action is excessive. Yeah. I think if you wanted to do that, do that from the beginning. Don't, yeah. don't do the ending. Yeah. I think where it could settle out is in a multiversal world, you could definitely have like a strand of a movie that sort of is effectively a what if of a character you already know. That I could see this idea that, for example, this praised version of Doctor Strange, spoiler alert, that winds up occurring in what if and then coming back later in the season. Benedict Cumberbatch as that popping up in a movie and having a little bit of an arc. Yeah, I could see that. That that could be interesting. Like mm -hmm. as long as it's, it's explained properly and linked properly, that could work. Yeah. So I sort of I'm not clear as to whether Kevin is intent on making this like its own thing or whether he's just saying look in the multiversal MCU you could see these little what if style vignettes or takes on the characters you already know being integrated into future projects I tend yeah. to think it's the latter I'd be surprised if we got full on live action what if. I don't know what you think about that yeah, I'd be surprised as well. I, I just don't um, think it, it gets excessive. I mean, you have so many things already on your plate. Um, that you, although you're Marvel and yes, you've been successful, you still 
can't go and think that everything you put out is going to be fantastic and it'll be well received. You really still have to think about what you're putting out there and, and, and really, you know, put those heads together, get the parliament working and, and put something out that everybody's going to, the majority of people at least will, will, will receive it well. And you can continue doing what you've been doing for the, what you've done so, so far for the past 20 years. And, and it's been nothing but success. Um, doing a live action form of this, um, I, again, it, yeah, it seems excessive, um, it seems costly, uh, depend, obviously depending on what it is that you're going to do. Although they want to throw the Watcher versus Perfect Ultron into live action, I'll watch it. I don't know where they want to put it, but if they want to put that scene up in live action, I'll watch it. <laughs> Yeah, it was dope. It was dope. <laughs> but let's see. I, I doubt they, they'll do that. I, I'm certainly, I, I'm pretty sure they think about it. I mean, we thought about it, right? So um, it's not out of the realm of possibility. It all depends on how they go about it. But um, I think they just have to be careful about doing too much, right? And then sacrificing what they still have to yet make popular right because yeah. you still got fantastic four and still x-men and all that stuff x-men and fantastic four is a huge undertaking i don't care what nobody says x-men has to be successful if it's if it's a bomb then we're gonna we, we the beginning of the end is setting in if that fails well if fantastic opinion. four is a bomb it's never happening because then you're over three that, that's out i don't want to yeah. see that again you yeah, exactly. One more shot at this. Yeah, exactly. And and being that you're in the MCU and Marvel is doing this or whatever, that has to see. It has to. It has yeah. to. So let us know in the conversation below what you guys think about this possibility of a what if what if live action uh, show on Disney Plus. Next up, Ava DuVernay hints at the possible reason why her new gods film got canceled i was talking about this many many i'll say two or three years ago yeah this is the pablo pat himself on the back <laughs> part of the podcast right here yeah yeah i gotta <laughs> pat myself on the back and you know although i was half right i was i was thinking more of ava do not wanting to do this movie because of the baggage that comes along with uh um Dark side already being done in the Zack Snyder verse and having the fans loving that version of it because I loved it. Brian, you liked it very much, right? Um, the little you mean the little that we saw, the little that we yeah. saw, you yeah, know, I would it would have been dope, it would have been dope if we seen, would have seen more, but not of the Zack stuff. Um, so going. So Ava going into this new gods and I guess creating this origin of uh, Dark Side perhaps wouldn't have been well received. You would have had too many fans just harassing you about the Zack Snyder verse and and and, and that version. What incentive other than you really wanted to do this film? because you like the characters, why would you do it, right? Um, what were your thoughts on, on, on this? I was surprised at how transparent she was. She was on a podcast and I mean, literally said, I mean, it was there's no question, it's the Zack Snyder cut that she's talking about when she's like, they basically asked my project because they were worried about sort of a competing version of some of the same characters to which I say, that is the most hypocritical thing for Warner Brothers in DC to say. You, I mean, they apparently are fine having eight Supermen up on the screen <laughs> at the same time, or like twelve Batman. Yeah. Why do we care if there's two dark sides? Like, come on, that's true. Yeah, I think we just got deprived of seeing something interesting, to be quite honest. And yeah, I think Zach's characterization, of Dark Side, that we saw, the little that we saw visually was great, um, but. Yeah, he, he didn't intend to build a whole world around Apocalypse and um, and and that side of the universe. And so if Ava DuVernay wanted to do that, great. I don't know why that would have been a problem. So I think it's a disappointing decision, but at least she was transparent about saying it was not her call. She still wanted yeah. to do it. 
Yeah. And then she moved up. <laughs> so Yeah. 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 Uh yeah, I, I, I would have wanted to see because I'm still looking for, in my opinion, looking for a, a movie that begins um I guess the next iteration of the DC universe and not the Zach verse that we got. Um perhaps the flashpoint will be it. Hopefully everything gets rebooted. Ezra Miller is no longer part of, of the DCEU because I, I, well, I just, I just the don't new think guys, he's good. Yeah, the new guys is tough too because I think actually this is one area where I think the DC the DC text is a little bit richer than Marvel on this like in terms of the origins of Darkseid and like the history of Apocalypse and like the yeah. relationships with like Darkseid, Orion and some of these other characters. I think those are actually really well done in the yeah, comics. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, yeah. there is something there that I think is different enough from what we've seen in the comic book genre to warrant making a universe and a film about that. So that's what kind of bums me out is that, yeah. whereas, you know, we just got done talking about the Eternals, but that storyline still flows from Earth. It's still an Earth origin of you know, alien, you know, races, whereas the Apocalypse story is very much it's entirely alien it is out yeah. there and yeah. that i think is kind of cool and I, I, yeah. I hope we do get to see it someday yeah yeah let us know in the comment section below um what you thought of this revelation um and whether you not thought and whether you thought such as i did that ava duvernay was one of the one that didn't want to do this film uh I would have liked to see something new um, outside of the, the the current DCEU. I'm looking to see anything new that's outside of the DCEU, right? To see if it sparks something from that. But yeah, let us know in the comments below what you guys think of that. Next up, Sony, Marvel are at odds. And they are at odds about something that you and I, Brian, have spoken about in the past regarding trailers and what they show. The Sony and, and Marvel are at odds about whether or not to show Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire in the, in the trailer. If you guys have been watching this show, you already know where I stand. Brian, I'm sure you know, and I'm sure you agree. And I, and I think it has, you can tell where Kevin stands on this. I think he said, you know, something with regards to expectations. I forget what he said, but I think he was leaning towards, you know, if we're going to do this, let's do it right. Let's not show our hand. And let's do something that people, when they do see it, we get that fan reaction. When we saw Aquaman in his classic suit in the trailer, and then when I saw it in the theaters, there was no reaction to it. We've already seen it in the trailers. Why show something that everybody's sort of expecting to see? It's obvious, but why show it now? For what? People are already excited about No Way Home. Let them go into the theaters and get this first visual of that. Get that excitement of when you first see Toby, when you first see Andrew in their suits and, and all three of them on the same screen. Let that first excitement come from that and not separate in everyone's you know individually at home watching it you want to break records on youtube that's what that's what you want to do or, re or whether or, or do you want to break records in the theaters which i don't think you probably will perhaps post pandemic record right which i think they'll probably get but you want everybody seeing it at the same time in the theater screaming hollering uh, about what they see on screen. Brian, what do you think about this? Well, I think if this is true, then it will say a lot about the power dynamic between Sony and Marvel when this trailer drops. 
and I don't know about you, but I'm kind of feeling like we're going to see them. I kind of feel like Sony, I kind of feel like this relationship has become more of a Sony driven relationship post game. And so- I am, look, I mean, I am the ultimate less is more person, but this is just dumb. Dumb. Like, I get it. The rumor dumb mill has been on fire about these yeah. two guys, and the denials have been silly. I get it. Yeah. It's a freaking Spider Man movie. You don't have to show anything. You don't have, like, if you had, look, if you had made, we just talked about Fantastic Four, right? If you had made five bad, horrible Spider Man movies in a row, then yes, you got to show extra in the trailer for the next one to get people to be convinced that I'm not going to be flushing my money down the toilet again. But this franchise is in great shape. Like, Spider Man 1 is great, Spider Man 2 is great. Okay, Spider Man 3 wasn't. Amazing Spider Man 1, eh. Amazing Spider Man's okay. Amazing Spider Man 2 is bad. But then Homecoming, fine. You know, far from home, fine. fine. All of his participation in Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame, great. This character is in great shape. It sells yeah. itself. You don't need to show anything. <laughs> exactly. Just show his logo for all I care and say yeah. what date we have to be at the theater. It just it boggles my mind that we're talking about this. Yeah. And to your point, just anyone who's seen a movie, just go through your head, your favorite cinematic moments, and try to imagine how much differently you would have felt if they had shown it to you in the commercial. <laughs> like, like, I don't know what to tell you. It's like, yeah. look at the trailers for Endgame and then imagine, well, what if they had shown you the portal scene where they all appear and he says, Avengers Assemble, and you saw that on TV before you went. I'm telling you, it's like... Imagine if you had seen Luke, I am your father, in a commercial before you went to see Empire Strikes Back. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Word up. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, yo, it's like, if I, if I was Kevin or whomever is having these conversations, if this has actually happened, I would be, Brian, I would be going crazy. Throw myself in the world. world. It's ridiculous. The only reason they show Molina is because he blew it. That's exactly. the only reason they did it because he screwed that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be on fire with, with whomever is across from me telling me that they want to do this. It just doesn't make any sense. It's like, come on, let us know in the comment section below. Do I'll give you another example. Go ahead. Like Disney Plus is different, but like let's say this was let's say let's say we're on network TV next week on the Loki finale. Whoa. <laughs> that episode is a lot different if you see a preview where he's all over the preview. Yeah. The impact of his appearance yeah. is made by the fact that you didn't know he was there and yeah. they kept it under wraps. Yeah. This is yeah. 101, man. But. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's 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 just doesn't make sense. Let us know in the comment section below if you want to finally see Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield in a in a commercial. That's where you want to get your excitement from, or would you want to see it in the movie theaters with everybody else screaming and and and, and clapping? And those are moments. That's why you go to the movie theaters is for those moments, right? Um, yeah, let us know in the comments below. Um, these final two topics are sort of um, A and B. Oh, did you want to well, talk about book? Let's do Book of Fett before we yes. do. Yes, yes, yes. We got trailers. Yes. Yeah. The Book of Bob- the Book of Fett uh, recently came out and this show looks like it's going to be there's going to be some action but there's going to be a lot of serious dialogue happening in this so there were some threads that i read 
that is almost like a sort of godfatherish sort of situation. You know, people are, are sitting down and having conversations, and and these are very um, pivotal conversations in, with regards to um, the lives of those saying what they're going to say in these situations. Um, I, I don't know what's her name. The one that's that sort of um, uh, Boba Fett's um, um, sidekick. Oh, well, the character's name is Fennec Shand. Ming-Na okay. Wen is the actress. Yeah. She yeah. says to the people sitting in that table, would you have said what you have said uh, if Jabba was sitting, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's practically, she's pretty much saying, listen, the same fear that you have for Jabba, you need to be having it here too. You know, and it's going to be very interesting how Fett reacts to those who seemingly feel that they have some sort of, uh, I don't know if it's power over him, but have some sort of say in how things go. This is going to be very interesting. Um, um, Brian, what did you think of the trailer when you saw it? Yeah, it's kind of what I hoped it would be, which is it looks gritty. It looks like it's a crime show. It's funny you make the Godfather reference. I actually thought of a different mobster, gangster scene. It, I was reminded a little bit of the scene in Untouchables. Okay. The Costner De Niro one where he's walking around the table of guys with the bat and then smashes the guy's head in. Spoiler yeah. alert. Mm -hmm. it, that scene reminded me of that where like they're all sitting around and like Boba's at the head of the table, just kind of like studying everyone, not saying anything, but you get the sense he disapproves of these other bounty hunters or, or criminals that he's talking about. So no, it, it's kind of what I said. I think it's going to be a pretty, you know, ground bound show, but it's like the seedy underbelly uh, in the criminal underworld of the Star Wars universe. And I think if it's well played and well acted, it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be, it'll be fun and, and have some good, good action in it. So no, it was kind of thematically what I what I thought and what I was what I was hoping for and then I guess the other thing is they didn't speaking of not spoiling anything I would obviously bet there's some pretty cool connectivity in this show to something bigger and broader and they're keeping that under wraps too yeah uh, I'm more I'm getting more and more excited for this show it is coming to us in in, in the next December Hawkeye is November 24th, and this is in this right around Christmas. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know Hawkeye was this soon. Um, so, yeah, we got a lot to look forward to. And, and The Book of Fed is certainly one of those shows that I am not going to be missing out on on a week to week basis when they do. I, I wish they would have gotten a Netflix route and just released all of it. Because um, I take a day off and watch all them joints um but yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the trailer for the book of fat um are you guys excited to see that what sort of um vibes you get from this trailer and what you think this show will be next up this is gonna be 1a1b uh topic um, the Rock. The Rock says, <laughs> "No yes, pun intended." Does. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> he says that they can make. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> he says that they can make. And when I say they, he's he. Uh, from what I read, he looks over at Gal Gadot and and, and Ryan Reynolds, and that they can make a, a DC. You and MCU crossover happen. Who is asking for it? Why does it seem that The Rock wants to be the one who is the leader of a movement that really doesn't exist? Or uh, the guy that wants to be the first to influence a crossover of this magnitude uh, is beyond. I, I just don't understand where he where he's getting this information or where he's. I don't get it. 
I don't understand why he feels that he needs to be the one to do this. Nobody is asking for this. Just like nobody asked for Rampage. Just like nobody asked for San Andreas. San Andreas. <laughs> Just like nobody asked for a Skyscraper. Where is he getting his, is it him in a room and, and he's going to let's do this and everybody says yes, or is somebody telling him, yo, let's do this. And they, and they, I don't, I don't get it. Why he thinks that people are wanting this. Brian, what did you think of his claim that he feels that they can get this done? Like it needs to be done. I don't tell me, come talk, talk to me, tell me, you know, it's like, you know, it's like when you're growing up and you're at school and you have like, you you have like a group of people at school that knows a rack and our day, like knows a certain cartoon or like knows a certain show or comic or whatever. And you have the kid that like wants to be in the group, but doesn't really know or understand the characters mm -hmm. and that kid is always like you know it'll be cool you know it'd be really cool <laughs> and then proposes an idea that is so preposterous and yeah. stupid that the rest yeah. of the people who actually know the material are like that's great man whatever <laughs> that's what this is <laughs> like it, yeah if you truly understood the genre and you truly understood both sides of the genre you wouldn't think about this period and people who are dedicated fans of Marvel, DC, both, whatever, I find it impossible to believe that there is a real appetite to see this. So to me, it's just The Rock wanting to be the coolest guy in the room and trying to one-up what's already been done and being like, well, what's left? Oh, I know. I'll smash the two universes together and call it the biggest thing that's ever been done. And it's like, man, you're trying too hard. You're trying way too hard. We don't need yeah. it. We don't want it. And if it is going to happen, we probably don't want you as the person bringing it to us. Yeah. If the rock was only willing to play ball, man, like if I was to sit down with the rock, I'd be like, Hey, the rock. The, the, the role for you is the thing. Imagine doing, imagine seeing the thing doing the rock bottom on something because he saw it on TV. You know, all the rock bottom doing the el the people's elbow. <laughs> you know, that would be and and he's and the rock is the thing. That would be something to see. And if he didn't want to have too much participation, he could be gladiator in the Shia Empire, right? Whatever. I don't. I, Nobody's asking for this, man. Nobody asks. Nobody wants this. There may be a few. I'm not going to say nobody. I'm saying there may be a few that would like to see it, but they're the very few that just wants to see it just to see it. You know, I wanted to see Street Fighter and look what we got. I wanted to see Mortal Kombat. Look what we got. I wanted to see it. It wasn't great. And nobody was, though, perhaps back in the day, people were asking for those films. But how do you, you know, how do you go about doing that? You know, and, and how do you go about doing this without it making being, without it being silly? But the, the Rock's fallacy, and this extends beyond this discussion, is that, as I said, he is constant. He only knows one direction, and that's bigger. It's why in his own movie, like you're talking about the movies he's made. It's why The Rock has reached this point where it's like in his movies, I have to fight an earthquake. I have to fight a hundred foot tall dragon with a 50 foot eight. <laughs> like The Rock doesn't understand in my mind, as big a star as he is, I if I was in a room with him, I would say the right answer for you is to go smaller. Yeah. Be more vulnerable. Yeah. Be more human. You yeah. are too much a superhero in every part that you take. The beauty of Predator and some of Arnold's classic roles is that he was an enormous human at the time, but he seemed vulnerable. Like in Predator, he's getting his butt 
hit yeah. by this thing in the jungle. It seems believable that he could both die, but hold it. Rock should understand it isn't make the biggest, baddest explosion or the biggest, baddest crossover, or have Superman fight Black Cat. Like, go smaller, go sleeker, go tighter. Yeah. Build a persona and a character that people want to get behind and then see what you can do with it. But a Marvel DC crossover, doomed to fail. If it's yeah. attempted, I don't think, I mean, Kevin Feige is going to throw his body in front of that, but like, he's going to be avoiding that to phone call like the plague, like COVID. <laughs> well, that, that would be the day he goes to Disney and says, it's either me or The Rock. Yeah. Take your pick. Yeah. And if Disney chooses The Rock, then they then they deserve everything that comes out. Listen, after. if they were to even attempt or, or we hear of any talk about this possibly even happening, that will be, in my mind, the beginning of the end of the no doubt. genre. Sort the genre at that point, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let us know in the conversation what you guys think about that possibility happening. And um, our last topic is uh, The Rock. Um, and I have the article, actually. Let me just read his quote. Yeah, read the quote, because it's... This comes to us from a Heroic Hollywood. Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson talks Black Adam and fan reaction to DC fandom footage. He says, and I quote, I can tell you about Black Adam that we made a great movie and a little bit of footage that we did show in, in, the, in that tease. Fans went effing crazy. Effing nuts. It was just so cool to see. I don't know what he, what he saw but because it was virtual. But I also think it's an exciting time at DC when Seven Bucks Productions, I've been hearing, you know, he's been pushing that for, for a minute. Walter Hamada and for what we plan on doing in the world of DC, what we plan on doing in the world of DC. It's an exciting time so you can feel it and it's good. <laughs> Listen. If you were talking to me about the the fans went effing crazy, effing nuts for the Batman. I 100% believe you. But for Black Adam, there's a small group that probably went nuts. Very small. The talk of the town was not Black Adam. It was a footnote compared to the talk of the town, which was the Batman. Brian, I don't know what to tell you, man. This guy, listen, I'd hate to run into this guy. With <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I got to be real with you. It's like, yo. This dude is in his own world, man. This dude isn't, I don't know what he's seeing. I think the people around him big him up to, I don't know what kind of personality this guy has, where if you say something that's left field that he doesn't agree with you, is he going to look at you with killer eyes or something that you got to, you know, but, yo, nobody went crazy over this, yo. Nobody went nuts over the Black Adam. You, th the movie is done. Matt Reeves was able to deliver a stunning trailer with twenty five percent film, and you are done. And you gave us a scene of you. Nobody else that in there. I don't even remember who was in that. It was just you, and that's probably the point. Right? We want to remember you, and that's it. It's not about Black Adam. We didn't even see the other Justice League's uh, um, Justice Society. There's so there's Hawkman. There's a bunch of other characters in there. We didn't even get a glimpse of that. The movie is finished, and all we see is you. 
I'm sorry, yo. I don't care. The more and more I see this kind of talk, and and I, you know, live in this reality where I talk to other people and people have different opinions. And most of the opinion is that the Batman was the highlight of this fandom. Not Black Adam, not Shazam, not Aquaman, not anything else in fandom. The only thing that mattered for the rest of the week and for the rest of the year leading up to this film is the Batman. Brian. I'm very interested to hear what you have to say about this. So first off, for the people watching at home, the steam coming out of Pablo's headset <laughs> is not an effect that's actually happening right now. <laughs> I think you hit on it in when you said the people around him. I think that's a big part of this. And, and you know, I I think back to, and, and like I said, I, it's, I know it sounds hard to people believe at home because we always come on, we always have this take. We actually both love The Rock and we actually fans of his work in, in its own. Yeah. I think, you know, when The Rock was in WWE, when you go out every night and you perform in front of the crowd, you get the real time, real world feedback on your work. And The Rock was not a successful wrestler at first. It took several gimmicks for him to become for corporate champion and then the people's champion, which became the, the legendary characters. So my point is when you're a performer and you you don't get the heat from the crowd or you get booed or you, you know, the crowd's flat, there's no filter, which means you then take that feedback and you work on it in the storylines and your performance until you find the right outlet and the right persona, or persona which he was able to do. Yeah. He doesn't have that as a leading man in Hollywood because the people around him seem like they're telling him what he wants to hear, which is that everything is great. Mm -hmm. People want Marvel DC. People want you to do the biggest thing. People want you to do the most out of the world thing. They love the footage. They love the footage. And the box office to his projects is never bad enough to make him really rethink things. And so I think he lives, to your point, in an alternate reality, which is not totally detached from reality. Like, he is a big star. He's one of the most successful, bankable yeah. who's working today. There's no question about that. He ain't a billion dollar man, though. Go ahead. But we, you and I, hold him to a higher standard because we saw him become the best at his profession in another walk of life. And I firmly believe he could be that yeah. in Hollywood and he chooses not to be. And when I hear stuff like this, it tells me that either he's not close enough with his ear to the ground to really understand how his fandom presentation resonated or the people around him are just sycophants lying to him about how the world perceives this. And the only feedback he's really going to get, and it probably won't have the intended effect, is when this movie makes like $600 million instead of a billion two. And he doesn't take that as a sign he ought to be doing things a little bit differently. Because this movie ought to be a billion dollar plus film. And I don't think it's going to be. And I think what they did at Fandom, as we talked about previously, stuff like that is that's Doesn't get you there. man. That's just like a self, you know, you're just shooting yourself in the foot when you do stuff like that. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I we want to, we want to, listen, I, we've been talking about The Rock being Black Adam for years. And I'm talking yeah, about almost, over 10. Yeah, more than a decade. Yeah. The perfect guy to play Black Adam is The Rock. That's why it's crazy to me if you heard in our previous shows where I mentioned him saying that he that he's he pointed at the camera and told us that we're his number one boss. Really? If I was the boss, I'd be like, yo, you're fired. 
because I've been wanting you to do this film and you haven't done it. Yeah, he's given us San Andreas, Skyscraper, all these other stuff that nobody's asking for. Jungle Cruise is looking like a diesel Popeye. That's all. Well, also, I mean, look at, you know, he he came into the Fast and Furious franchise and he helped he helped elevate. Yeah, but he couldn't stay part of the collective. He couldn't do it. He fell out. He fell out very famously with Vin Diesel. He had to go off on his own. I mean, that tells you a little something that like he was in arguably the I mean, not arguably the most successful action franchise on the planet today. And he was like, I got to be above this. There's one thing to compete. I get you want to compete. You want to be the number one guy. But when it's... Even Michael Jordan was about making the team better in order to accomplish a goal. It seems to me it's all about him, yo. And it's all about him. And and, and listen, again, I don't, I don't want to be the, the, the channel that bashes the rock all the time. But just the stuff that he says regarding what he sees in, in the superhero genre and it just doesn't... Let me draw a comparison here, though, because I think so I would probably submit that Leonardo DiCaprio is the top leading man of our generation uh, as a as sort of like a core, if you will. But Leo, to his credit, and he, you know, if you just stack up his movies, there aren't many bad ones. They don't make like, he doesn't make billion dollar type movies except for like Inception and stuff like that. But I'm just saying in terms of Oscar fair and memorable roles. But Leo's able to submerge himself in a project, right? So he worked with Marty Scorsese. He works with Paul Thomas Anderson. He works with the best directors in the field and he disappears into the part that he's playing. Whether he's, you know, guy, whether he's the guy on the, you know, in Frontier and the Revenant, or he's Jordan Belfort and Wolf of Wall Street, you know it's Leo, but he becomes the character and he's yeah. a part of something. And so in that sense, he's the lead, but he's not so far above the rest of the production that he, as to dominate its very existence. The rock in the action and superhero genre has never found that right balance, even though as a star, he is as big a star as Leo is, but he hasn't figured out that how to fine tune, how to surround himself with the right people to create those quality of projects in his genres. They'd be different, but I'm just saying that idea. Yeah. And this, when you read stuff like this, I mean, I know it makes you madder than me, but it it just, it makes me shake my head because it's like, we're just, we're going to get to the end of The Rock's career man. and it's going to feel like an underachievement. Like, it's going to be one of those where it's like, it's a great career, but man, it should have been, should have been, you know, Mount Rushmore and it won't. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm like, uh, listen, I'm not like, Again, I just want to be clear, you know, I, I was there when The Rock became The Rock, right? I was there. I remember. I wasn't there in the building, but as a, you know, watching it TV, as I was an avid wrestling fan, you know, I was, I watched Hulk Hogan eat your vitamins and then turn into the NWO, Ric Flair and all that other stuff. And then I, I was there when it was just Rocky Maivia and, and he was whacked. <laughs> exactly right the fans you know? told you that yeah and because he was able to see that the fans weren't reacting to it he tried a different approach and it worked I think he I don't know if you ever saw Brian 30 for 30 Ric Flair yeah for sure Ric Flair was a persona that he sort of adopted to his real life he wasn't Ric Flair. You know, he became Ric Flair. I think it's the sort of same thing with The Rock. He hasn't let that persona go. 
you know, if you guys agree with what we're saying and some guy saying some other stuff, put them onto the show and let them comment in the comment section below. And let's start this conversation about what's going on in the MCU, what's going on in the DCNU and superhero comics in general. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.